So at this point, we got the API key from Yelp's database, which, which tells Yelp that we're seeking data from them. But we're going to have to set up something called the URL, which is the web address. And we're going to add specific endings to the end of this URL to get certain information back from them. So the types of things that we're looking to get back are how close the restaurant is, have the prices be one to two dollar signs, and if they're open now. So to do this, we're going to use a join block because we need to enter specific data. So we'll add about seven extra blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. And then we'll add in a text block and then just copy and paste it for each of them. Awesome. So now we have the blocks ready and we want to take a look at some code. So we're going to go back to the documentation and to get to this page, you're going to click on business endpoints. So this is what code looks like. And if you're confused, don't worry about it. We're going to go through this together and you will become an API pro after this. What we need to do first is set ourselves up to be able to receive information from Yelp. So you see this section over here that says request uh, followed by get and a URL. We're going to copy this URL and we're going to go back to the blocks. We're going to put it in the first block here and we're going to also type search and a question mark. So this, remember, is a very specific format that software engineers use. So this is the URL that we're going to be using, and we're going to be adding some things to it to get the information that we need. And remember that software engineers use this very specific format, so we'll go through it and see what we need to add. So in the next block here, we want to specify that the category of information that we're receiving is about restaurants. So we do this by typing in category equals restaurants. There we go. So we're sorting all the information from the database into our restaurants variable. Now we want to store the location of the restaurant in our latitude and longitude blocks. So we're going to start by ampersand. Again, very specific format. So ampersand longitude equals and in our next block, we're going to get rid of this one and call up variables and use our app. Oh, not latitude. We're going to use app longitude. Great. In the next one, we're going to add ampersand latitude is equal to. And then the next block, we're going to go to the variables drawer and drag out app latitude. Next, we're going to specify the limit of restaurant suggestions that we want. So in this case, let's say we don't want more than 50. So we're going to say and limit is equal to 50. And for the next one, we will specify the price range that we want. So we'll do this by percent price equals one comma two, where one and two are just saying that we want the price range to be between one dollar $1 sign and two dollar signs. Uh, we can also get the suggestions of the apps that are open right now. Um, we do this by calling the open now variable from the Yelp database. And I'm just gonna quickly go back to the docs over here just to show you that there is a list at the bottom. So whatever type of information you want from them, that you have all these options over here. So there's usually a table that shows you what attributes or properties you can get, uh, you can get from the database. Great, so now we have everything that we need from Yelp's database, but we need to remember that anything that comes from the database again, is in JSON format. Now, JSON means JavaScript object notation. So all this code that we saw earlier is JavaScript object notation. Now, what does that mean for us? Basically, the code is in a specific format. And in order for us to use it, we need to convert it into another format that our app can understand. 
there is a computer science term for converting the information and that's called parsing the data. So we'll be taking all the code that we have in JSON format that we just received and we'll be converting it into another format called object format. And doing this is quite simple. First, what we'll do is we'll grab an in-web API call get block, and we'll put that right here underneath the from web API set URL to block. The web API call get block has three main components, response, status, and error. We really only need to worry about the response because that's where all the data that we retrieved from Yelp's database is stored in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the set app object block and we're gonna use the drop down menu to select app restaurants. We'll go to the objects drawer and get this get property property name of object block here. And what we wanna do to this is we want to change the word here to businesses. And why we're doing this is because if we go back to the Yelp documentation, we're using businesses. That's the property name that we're getting information from. And then what we want to do is go back to objects. We'll grab a get object from JSON and we will take the response block and add it here. So what we just did here is that we're specifying that the data that we got is from JSON format and we want to convert it into object format. And just remember that the data that we got is stored in response. That's why we have it here so that the response that we have is in JSON format and we're converting it into an object. The last thing that we want to do on this screen is navigate to the results screen now. So we're going to go into the control and we'll bring out navigate to put it here and change this to results. So this is saying that we'll navigate to the results screen. And again, the results screen displays a restaurant suggestion and gives you more information, or it allows you to uh, generate another random restaurant. So now we can get started on the blocks in the results screen. So what we want to do on the results screen is take all the information that we got from the Yelp database and store it in their corresponding variables. And we'll do this in a very similar way that we just did on the options screen at the end where we converted the JSON format into objects. So we'll start off by taking a to do something block, and this is from the functions drawer, and we're going to change to do something to get random restaurant. So that way it's easier for us to remember what this function does. Now we're going to start storing data into our variables. So we'll grab this set app object to block here. We'll go into lists, get a random item of list block, and then we're just going to actually get rid of one of these. Um, and then here, we will just add our variable app restaurants. So what this does is it puts all of the restaurants that we get back from Yelp into a list. So now we'll click on the restaurant name label. We'll get from restaurant set name to and we want to do the same thing here where we're converting json format into an object format so we'll grab a get property oh sorry wrong one we'll grab a get property name of object block and we'll set this again to app object and in property name, we want to type name. It's important to remember that these property names have to be exactly the way that they appear on the documentation. So we'll do a similar thing for the restaurant image. We'll grab the restaurant image, set picture to block. We'll get an object that is get property this, and then add an app object. And we're going to change the property name here to image underscore URL. And lastly, we want to set the app link to the URL property from the database. So we'll grab a set block again, and we'll say set app link to get property name, and then add an app object here 
and we'll call this URL because this is exactly the way it's displayed on the documentation. So just remember that the app object variable is just a general placeholder that has smaller placeholders within it that contain very important information, such as the name of the restaurant and the location of the restaurant. Great, so we're almost done. Now we just need to ensure that whenever the results page opens, we want it to call this get random method. So we'll do this by clicking on the results drawer and we say when results opens, then we can go to functions and you'll see that your function name is here. We'll call get random restaurant. Now remember that we have a re-roll button which gives us another restaurant suggestion in case we didn't like the first one. So we'll do a very similar thing here. We'll click when re-roll button click, we will get a random restaurant. So the last thing we need to be able to do is go to the link of the restaurant. So we'll do that by programming the more info button. So we'll do when more info button click. We'll drag that out here. So we want to go into control and grab the open link block. We'll connect that there. And we simply need to set it to app link. So when this button is clicked, it'll take us to the restaurants page on the Yelp website. There we go, we have a working restaurant suggestion app using the web API component and Yelp's database. And let's just live test it to make sure that it's actually working. All right, so when we click the pick a restaurant button, we should see a restaurant name, a restaurant image. If we click more info, it'll take us to the page and if we click find another we'll get another restaurant suggestion awesome so you now know how to use the web api component and you can make some very cool apps with this uh, there's a link in the description box below that has a list of the web apis and i encourage you to take a look at that and see what apps you can make using different companies databases we will be creating more API tutorials for you and we're excited to see what you build. Thanks for thanking.